Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm real glad that you could return. In this segment, we're going to be talking about a serious condition, an often misdiagnosed condition. Imagine living with a puzzling and uncomfortable skin condition and trying unsuccessfully for years to get an accurate diagnosis. Well, that's the reality for patients living with an under-recognized immune disease called HS. It can be a profound impact on everything from quality of life to self-esteem and physical well-being. Well, here to raise uh, some awareness is Dr. Jocelyn Kirby. She's a Penn State University dermatologist. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Kirby. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for making the time. Give our listeners a little bit of insight into what HS is. So, great question. HS stands for a skin condition, hydradenitis superativa. Uh, that's a mouthful, so that's Absolutely. why we call it HS. Um, and I am out uh, and so thankful for, for your time because we want to raise awareness because this skin condition can look for all the world like an infection, like an infected hair follicle or an abscess or boil on the skin. <laughs> the difference is that they just keep happening, so they'll pop up repeatedly usually in folds of the body, like under the arms, the fold of the leg or the groin, the buttock, and for women, under the breast. (laughs) Are they often misdiagnosed as boils? Yeah. So I think the risk is when a provider doesn't realize that this is the third time or 13th time that somebody's had this kind of a lesion and over and over in the same place, that that history, that story of recurrence is is really important and valuable to highlighting that this is probably not an infection, but inflammation. Uh, I wouldn't say autoimmune, but an inflammatory disease of the skin called HS. As patients, we tend to become used to chronic condition and just kind of live through it. What is it like to live with this condition, especially if it's been misdiagnosed for quite some time and you're just living with it? That is such an important question, Neil. So it makes me think of a few things. One is it can be so frustrating to be somebody with a skin condition and to see five different providers 17 times um, on average before being told this is probably not an infection and, you know, one-off courses of antibiotics might not be the best treatment, Um, that this is something that's caused by your immune system. So let's take a different approach. (laughs) Having this condition is a lot like being on a roller coaster. And that's how one of my patients once uh, talked about it, because you get these flare-ups, these sudden, very painful lesions that come up out of nowhere unpredictably, and that can really wreak havoc on your personal life, uh, your work life. Uh, Whatever it is that you are trying to do becomes a lot harder to do. And because it's a skin condition, it can be visible. Even if it is in the underarm or on the thigh, it can really change what people are willing to wear or activities they're willing to do. And that can be really isolating. Now, although they're mistaken for an infection or maybe a boil or some other condition, what about the pain? Is pain a symptom? Is it a different type of pain than some of these other misdiagnosed conditions that a person would have? That is another really good question. And pain is the biggest thing that people with HF talk about because these, whether it's a, a smaller pimple-like lesion or a larger boil-type lesion, both can be really painful, and it can get in the way of doing normal activities like opening a cabinet, uh, driving, uh, taking care of your kids, or taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So the pain can really change what you're able to do uh, with your life, whether it's for a week or a year. If a patient is uh, receiving treatment for a misdiagnosis, can that exacerbate HS? Typically, it won't make it worse, but Mm -hmm. it's not going to be as helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, So having this awareness of the disease, and and so I've partnered with AbbVie today to bring awareness to this disease because it has a name, Mm -hmm. and the people who have it are not alone, which is sometimes how they felt for a long time. And there are treatments for it because there's so much research happening on this disease. It it brings me so much hope. What should healthcare providers look for? What is that that aha thing to look for in diagnosing HS properly? 
So your question is great because that's what we're trying to achieve. We, we want providers to recognize this sooner. Uh, and we also want patients to feel empowered that they can go get more information and bring it to their provider. So whether you're a person with the condition or a provider, there's a couple things that can help. One is the repeated episodes, meaning that people are getting these pimple-like lesions or boil-looking things, and they just keep happening. Usually two or more of those things in six months is a pretty, you know, kind of confident point where you can say, all right, this is probably HS. It's been two or more times in six months. And the right types of lesions. So that means that it's those pimple-like spots or boils in the right parts of the body, meaning the folds under the arms, the groin, the buttock, and sometimes the chest. You know, earlier I mentioned um, some people getting used to chronic conditions. If a person has a skin condition that is not HS, could they develop HS in conjunction with something else and have to take dual treatments? Or are there any treatments that could possibly overlap with an existing skin condition and HS? So we use a lot of different tools to to treat HS, and Mm -hmm. we tailor them to the pattern uh, and types of lesions that somebody has. So the goal is always trying to balance the impact of the disease against the risk, the side effects, or the benefits of the treatment. So the people that you can go to who are knowledgeable about HS, there's a lot of different providers that can be. I'm a dermatologist. We feel like HS is sort of in our wheelhouse. Um, So you can get more information on HS and those treatments at the No BS about hs.com website or the HS Foundation. And the goal is really just don't delay. If you're one of those people who's had this for years, there is a treatment. Um, Don't Mm -hmm. feel like you have to wait. Get out there, engage with somebody who knows about HS. Now, for those of us who, um, regardless of our condition, unless we're bleeding, we're not going to the doctor. You think you maybe have a skin condition, you're not sure what it is, um, but you're not going to see a doctor anytime soon. You're going to ride it out and see how it goes. Talk to that person. So I I think that the big take-home point is we don't have to ride it out and we don't have to wait. Uh, We can do telehealth appointments, and a lot of providers are used to the pandemic now. They have cleaning Mm -hmm. procedures. It's very safe. So there's really not a reason to continue to suffer. So, Neil, thank you again for the incredible opportunity to reach your audience and for your time. Thanks again. Thank you, Dr. Kirby. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.